Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We are still measuring temperatures, this time with a so-called thermo element. What a thermo element is, I want to explain briefly. Okay? So, thermo elements are actually the application of a so-called Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect. Seebeck, I wrote it talking English, even if it's a German physician. Seebeck effect. What is a Seebeck effect? Let's think about, we have one material, okay, this is metal A. Here, we have a certain temperature which we want to measure. Yeah? Here, we have a certain temperature, we have a certain temperature, I call it A for ambient or whatever. Yeah? So we have here, between here and here, we have a temperature difference. A temperature difference. And this Thomas Seebeck, he realized there is a voltage. If I have in a metal uh, a temperature gradient, gradient, then I do have a voltage. Uh. So here we have a voltage U1, which is a function of theta, delta theta. All right, it's a function of delta theta. It's a function of the gradient. Yeah? The temperature difference between those two points will result in a voltage. Yeah? He realized this by accident. Yeah? He saw a, a, a so some wires yeah? and then one end of the wire got very close to a candle yeah? and the candle got hot and he see he has a compass next to it and he saw the compass is moving so he thought it's a thermoelectric a thermomagnetic effect that this is thermoelectric effect this was discovered a little bit later but you know they have one 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 metal this is how metals behave simply okay and then he realized, depending on the metal, that these thermo voltages are different, right? So if we then have some metal B, we have a Different, it's the same delta theta, yeah, and we have a different voltage here. U2 from delta theta. Huh? Yes, U1 from delta theta. And if we measure here this voltage. It's the difference between this thermal voltage and this thermal voltage. All right? We just have to measure the voltage here. That's it. Yeah? So here we have our measurement device. And this is how a thermal element is working. All right? I have here some temperature. I have here some smaller temperature. Both build up, both metals build up uh, thermal voltage. The difference of the thermal voltage is directly, directly uh, connected to the to the temperature differ difference between those two points. Yeah? This here is called the measurement point. And this here 
is called the reference. Point. And we have here this delta theta between the measurement point and the reference point. All right. So actually, what we would like is to have two materials which differ very much in in uh, voltage, thermal voltage. Yeah? By the way, it's called Seebeck effect. Write this down. This is thermal voltage. Seebeck effect. Yeah. And if you have these here connected, there will be then current running. Okay. And this is what Seebeck actually observed. These, these two ends were also touching. One was hot, one was cold. And because of the voltage difference, there was some, some current. And the current caused the, the compass from, from not pointing to north. Okay, so what we want to have? We want to have a material pairing which will consider in a huge difference between the thermal voltages. This difference should be uh, linear to the, to the voltage difference. And the materials should also withstand high temperatures without corroding or something like this. This is my wishing list. Cannot be fulfilled. When we talked about resistive, resistive thermometers, I said, okay, there is one widely used thermometer, or the thermometer was the platinum thermometer. Here, we have several pairs of materials in use. Yeah? So, because there is not one ideal thing, it always depends on the application. So there are different types, uh, types of those thermal element, and write it down, type, material, range. Very commonly used or very often used is well, this, this is for, you know, the, the standard type K. Yeah. Type K. This is nickel, chrome, chromium, nickel. Yeah. And the range is between 270 degrees Celsius to 1300 degrees Celsius. This is degrees Celsius. Yeah, minus 270 to 1300. Yeah, replace often, also very often used is J. This is iron, copper, nickel. Yeah. This is from minus 210 up to 1200. Yeah. Then type N is nickel, chromium, nickel, silicium. Yeah. Minus 210 to 1300. Then there's E, nickel chromium, copper nickel, minus 270 to 1000. Then there's the type D, copper, copper nickel, yeah. minus 270 to 400. Yeah, not that high. And also very often used are these platinum things. Yeah. Platinum rhodium R PT13 rhodium platinum. Yeah. And this goes from minus 50 to 1768. So much higher than the others, right? And also S, yeah. Platin 10 rhodium, platin, platinum, 
these are also quite often in use. Then there would be type B, yeah, platinum 30, rhodium, platinum 16, rhodium. Yeah. This goes from 0 to 1820. So we're getting higher. And whenever we have really high voltages, uh, temperatures, sorry, temperatures, then usually tungsten is somewhere around. Yeah. So this is type C, for instance. This is tungsten. Wolfram is tungsten. Yeah. Rhenium. Two different mixtures. And this is defined from 0 to 2315 degrees Celsius. Yeah, we measure really high temperatures. And there's also type A, which is tungsten 5, rhenium, tungsten 20, rhenium. This is from 0 to 2000, 2500. Yeah. So these are different material types. Like I said, very usual types are these. These, this, this. Uh, they are the ones which are mainly used. Type K is the main one. Uh, but it's not, it has not this, this, this specific, specific thing, uh, specific status like uh, the, the platinum, platinum uh, resistance thermometer. This is absolute standard. Here, all of the things are somewhere used. There are more elements. Huh? As we can see, we are not really measuring the temperature here. We are measuring the temperature difference between a reference point and a measurement point. This is always to keep in mind. So if I have the reference point temperature, I know the measurement temperature, the measurement point temperature. However, how can I Determine the reference, reference, reference point temperature. Yeah? Reference point temperature. I can either do it by guessing. I guess the temperature. Yeah? Usual are three degrees Celsius above room temperature. If I guess the reference point temperature, I'm also guessing the measurement point temperature, right? So the accuracy is not very high. If it does not really need to be high, if it does not really matter, if something has 1,200 degrees Celsius or 1,205 degrees Celsius, hey, yeah, guessing is good enough. Yeah. Then we have uh, the possibility of using an electric heating. Heat up to 50 degrees Celsius, this is a usual value, yeah, with electric thermostat. Accuracy, one Kelvin, okay. Here we have accuracy of five, I would say, here we have Accuracy of 1 Kelvin, electric heating. So we are heating it up to a certain level. And, and, yeah, that's it. And we need to have this above, above uh, room temperature level. Because, yeah, then we only heat, we can only heat. If we are cooling it, yeah, we can do a mixture, an ice an ice mixture. Water. Distilled. And ice. 
zero degree Celsius. Yeah. We simply place this into an ice mixture, distilled water to, to, to be uh, isolating, electrically isolating, and ice, zero degree Celsius. Quite accurate. Yeah. However, for permanent, this is for experimental things high quality experimental measurements okay for permanent measurements you not want to have a bucket full of ice and and fill it so you are using an ice point thermostat these are working uh, with 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 a pelt element And have an accuracy of 0 0.01 Kelvin. Yeah. So it's hold electrically controlled with a Peltier element which can heat and cool Peltier element. Yeah. By the way, a Peltier element is nothing else than a thermal element. However, we're not measuring the voltage, we're applying the voltage. If we apply a voltage in either direction, this will get hot or cold. Yeah. So it's exactly the same effect we are observing, but the other way around. Here we are measuring the thermal voltage, and here we are applying a voltage, and which will, which will result in a, a gradient, and then the temperature gradient. So a Pelt element we can heat or cool, and this we can do with accuracy of 0 to 0 to 1, 0 to 0 to 1 Kelvin. So and if we know this temperature with 0 to 0 to 1 Kelvin, we know this temperature with 0 to 0 to 1 Kelvin, and that's really really accurate. All right. So this is how thermal elements are working with the help of the thermal voltage, the Seebeck effect. Yeah. So another form of thermometer of temperature measurement. Next time we are also talking about the form of temperature measurement. I'm sure you have already seen images of objects where hot objects appear other than cold objects. Hot objects are usually red or even white and cold objects are usually displayed blue. Yeah? So this is called thermography. And this is the next video where we will discuss next time. Yeah? Thermography. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.